भगवते वासुदेवाया ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाया ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाया ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाया ओम नमो भगवते meets the Lord. And this is 55 was on the board. We'll read 55 short purport, 56 short, 56 short purport, 57. We'll talk on 57. Yena Prasupta Purusha Sapam Vedatmana Tada Chukam Cha Nagunam Brahma Tam Kamanam Avehi Mam Jaina Prasutta Purusha Swapam Veda Manastara Swapam Veda Manastara Brahma Swapam Brahma Arehi Mam Vena Prish Pasukta Prusha Swapam Veda Manastara Sukam Chanir Gunam Brahma Sukam Chanir Word for word Yena By whom? The Sabim Brahman Prashupta, sleeping. Rusha, a man. Swapam, subject, the subject of a dream. Veda, knows. Kamana, of himself. Tada, at that time. Sukam, happiness. Cha, also, Nirgunam, without, con without contact with the material environment. Brahma, Supreme Spirit. Tam, Aham, Manam, the pervader. Avehi, just know. Mam, me. Translation purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, Srila Prabhupada. Translation, know me to be the Supreme Brahman, the all-pervading super soul, for whom the sleeping living entities can understand his dreaming condition and his happiness beyond the activities of material senses. That is to say, I am the cause of activity, the activities of the sleeping living being. Purport, when living any becomes free from false ego, he understands his superior position as a spirit soul, part and parcel of the pleasure potency of the Lord. Thus, due to Brahman, even while sleeping, the living entity can enjoy. The Lord says the Brahman, that, that Brahman, the Paramatma, and that Bhagavan are I myself. This is noted by Jiva Goswami in his Krana, Krama Sandarbha. Text number 56. If one dreams during sleep, if one dreams during sleep are merely subject matters witnessed by the super, super soul, how can the living entity who is different from the super soul remember the activity of dreams? The experiences of one person 
cannot be understood by another. Therefore, the knower of the facts, the living entity, who inquires into the incidents manifested in dreams and wakefulness is different from the circumstantial activities. That knowing factor is Brahman. In other words, the quality of knowing belong to the living entity and to the dream soul. Thus, the living entity can also experience the activities of dreams and wakefulness. In both stages, the knower is unchanged, but qualitatively, one with the Supreme Brahman. Purport. In knowledge, the living entity is qualitatively one with the Supreme Brahman, but the quality of the Supreme Brahman is not the same as that of the living entity, who is part of Brahman. Because the living entity is Brahman in quality, he can remember the past activities of dreams and also know present activities of wakefulness. Text number 57. Tare dad vishvim tam pum so madbhavam vinam amanaha tad sar samsara e tasya deha deho atir miti. When the living entity thinks himself different from me, forgetting his spiritual identity, a qualitative oneness with me, in eternity, knowledge, and bliss, his material condition life begins. In other words, instead of identifying his, his interests with mine, he becomes interested in his bodily expansions like his wife, children, and material possessions. In this way, by the influence of his actions, one body comes from another, and after one death, another death takes place. Purport by Srila Prabhupada. Generally, the Maya bodies, a person's influenced by Maya, Maya body philosophy, think themselves as good as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. This is the cause of their conditioned life. As stated by the Vaishnava poet Jagannanda Pandit, his Prema Vivarta. Krishna Bohir Mukha Hana Boga Manchakare Nikata Sta Maya Tare Japatiya Dire. As soon as the living entity forgets his constitutional position and that endeavors become one with the Supreme, his conditioned life begins. Conception that the Supreme Ramon and living and the are equal, not only in quality, but in quantity, is the cause of conditioned life. If one forgets the difference between the Supreme Lord, living entity, his conditioned life begins. Conditioned life means giving up one's body to accept another body, and undergoing death to accept death again. Death again. The Maya body philosophers teach the philosophy tat tvam asti, saying that you are the same as God. He forgets tam tat tvam asti applies in terms of the marginal position of living entity, who is like the sunshine. There is heat and light in the sun and there's heat and light and the sun shine. Thus they are qualitatively one. But one should not forget, the sunshine rests on the sun. As the Lord says in Bhagavad-gita, Brahmanohi Pratistaham. I am the original source of Brahman. The sunshine is important because of the presence of the sun globe. It's not that the sun globe is important because of the all-pervasiveness of the sunshine. Forgetfulness and misunderstanding this fact is called maya. Because the forgetfulness of one's conditional position and that the Supreme Lord is one, one the Supreme Lord, that the, and that of the Supreme Lord, one comes into maya or samsara conditioned life. In this regard, Madhvacharya says, Sarvabhinam pratmanam vishmaram Sam Sared Iha Abhinam Sam Smara Sharam Yati Tamo Nasti Atra Sam Sayaha 
When one thinks that the living entity is non-different in all respects from the Supreme Lord, there is no doubt that he is in ignorance. Sri Shaitanya Manobhistam Sapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Gadamayam Danti Swa Padanti Kam Pancha Kobe Tribuja Cha Kripa Sindhu Eva Cha Panna Pabne Vyo Vaishne Vyo Nuhonaha Sri Krishna Shaitanya Pabhuni Chananda Sri Adreti Grada Sri Vasudhi Gaur Bhakti Bindu Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare so I request everyone to turn off their cell phone if they haven't done so already. Bukam kuroti bachalam pungam langate giram yat kripa tamaham bande shigur dina taranam. I offer my respectful message on my spiritual master, liver of fallen souls, whose mercy turned the dumb into elegant speakers, enabled the lame to cross. Mountains and a swim, a dog to swim across the ocean. That's so stated in Chaitanya Charitamrita. So this, this uh, series of verses, King Tritaketu became uh, met his spiritual master Narada Muni. You see the mantra, and within. Uh, within seven days, he got the darshan of Lord Shankarshan. Here's a picture. Now, Lord Shankarshan is described in the fifth canto, the glories of Anantadev. He's an expansion of Lord Anantadev. Ananta Sesh is the thousand hooded serpent who's holding up all the universes on his hoods. And from him, there's expansion of Shankarshan, which is the forearm form or expansion of Lord Balaram. So, first there comes the Krishna, which is to Bhagavan Sayam. Then from Krishna comes Balaram. And from Balaram comes the quadruple expansion, Shankarshan, Pradunya, Aniruddha, and Vasudev. Then there's 24 expansions in the Vaikuntha planets, Vishnu forms. And then there's a second quadruple expansion of Shankarshan, Pradunya, Aniruddha, and Vasudev. And then there's the three Purusha avatars, the Karna Daksha Vishnu, who is the super soul of all the material universe, and there is Garbha Daksha Vishnu, who is the super soul of all the living entities, and Kachira Daksha Vishnu, who is the super soul in every living entity's heart. And this way we understand this Vaishnava philosophy. And Baladev Vijayabhushan says in this commentary that this verse is the, uh, is the conclusion of all Vaishnava philosophy. And Lord Shankarshan is telling Krita K2 uh, about himself. So there's no um, confusion. So religion without philosophy is just sentimental. And religion without, philo without uh, science is speculation. So the Vaishnava community, the Vaishnava community, we're not sentimentalists. Christians say, surrender to Jesus or you're going to hell. So one priest went to some coal miners and he said, surrender to Jesus, you're going to hell. But he said, what is hell? Well, it's dark and damp and cold. 
And they were working in such conditions anyway. So said, that's not so bad. We work. And then he said, there's no cell phones. Oh, they said, we don't want to go there. Actually, Brahma said, no newspaper. But today, it's no cell phone. People can't live without a cell phone. So anyway, uh, this is the difference between other religions. They don't really have any concrete philosophy. They just say surrender to Jesus. But we have everything. And uh, so Krishna consciousness is a science of self-realization. Now there was a group of devotees who were brought this question of the fall of the jiva and it became a controversial issue and they became they were over intelligent they tried to understand something that it's not possible for the conditioned living entity to understand how we came in this material world but according to Jagannatha Pandit, which is quoted here, he says, when the living entity desires to enjoy, separately from Krishna, the illusory potency of the Lord, Maya, immediately grabs the soul to her clutches, in her clutches. Being Maya's captive, he becomes bewildered and acts like someone who has been possessed by a witch. The jiva, soul, forgetting his constitutional position, as the eternal servant of Krishna, perfect and pure, becomes a slave of Maya. In this condition, he roams eternally in the material world from one body to another. He goes through many births. Sometimes he's born as a king, sometimes an ordinary citizen, sometimes as a Brahmin, sometimes as a Sudra. Sometimes he's suffering, sometimes he's happy, sometimes he's born as an insect. Sometimes he goes to heaven, then sometimes he go, comes to earth, comes down to earth again. Sometimes he goes to hell. Sometimes he's born as a demigod. Sometimes as a demon. Sometimes the master. Other times the servant. So this is the, what is being described here. We don't have to really ponder it too much. How we came in the material world, Prabhupada said it's like when you're on a boat and the boat turns over and you're swimming in the water trying to save your life you don't stop and scratch your head and think well, I wonder how that boat turned over so you just want to get saved so that's the same thing we shouldn't have to um, ponder over this question why we came in the material world but it says here it's due to our forgetfulness our identity and also because we misuse our independence as a living entity Javara Subhoi and Nitya Krishna Das were the eternal servants of Krishna Satchirananda eternally full of knowledge and bliss but we also have independence so because if you want to love God and know God it's not something that can be forced upon you it's something you have to want to do Volunteer, volunteer to do something you want just like boy and girl when a boy meets a girl a girl meets a boy they have a mutual attraction and a mutual uh, um, relationship with each other so the same way if we want to develop a relationship with the Lord uh, be, because we, uh, we have independence we can choose whether we want to love Krishna or whether we want to forget Krishna. But somehow we were foolish enough to think that it was better to forget Krishna and come in the material world and suffer um, repeated birth and death over and over again. So many different species of life. So Raj Chambri Dishani Bisto Matas Matir Ganapoam Cha. Krishna says, for me come remembrance, knowledge, and forgetfulness. So if you want to remember Krishna, he'll help you. If you want to forget Krishna, he'll also help you. So this is what explained here. Forgetfulness of our 
true identity. And uh, also, uh, Prabhupada begins his purport by attacking the Maya body philosophy. Maya body say Brahmaja, Jashishi, Kornita, Kishbara, Samson. Brahma is such a Jagat Mitya. That Brahman is, is the truth and uh, everything else is false. My body say that the world is false. That I'm not sitting here talking to you and you're not sitting there listening to me. It's all false. But that's not, we don't say that. We say it's not false, but it's temporary. I'm not going to be here for very long, and you're not going to be there for very long. So this is the real conclusion. In the Mayavadi, um, are considered the worst offenders. When the Architani was in Benares, he said that I've given this, Prakasananda Saraswati, was the leader of the Mayavadi sannyasi sect. And Mahajitanya declared Chaitanya Bhagavad, I have given that man leprosy because he's a big offender. Because he says, I don't have any form. I don't have arms, I don't have legs, I don't have heart. So I've given him leprosy. And Lord Chaitanya was very careful, although he took Mayabadi sannyas out of social convention, he was never a Mayabadi. And he would not associate with Mayabadis. As Vaishnavas, we don't associate with Mayavadis. We don't accept invitations from Mayavadis. In any way, you can respect the Mayavadi from a distance, but we should never associate with Mayavadis or get contaminated by Mayavadi philosophy. Lord Chaitanya said, if you hear Mayavadi philosophy, then you're doomed. Because Mayavadi philosophy doesn't make sense. And when Lord Chaitanya went to, met Prakasananda Saraswati, and his 60,000 disciples in Benares, he explained to them that your philosophy, which was given by Shankaracharya, is imaginary. And they agreed, we know that it's imaginary, but we're following the party line, what can we do? So Lord Sanya then converted them all into Vaishnavas. So we should not think that um, they say, Tatvam of C, you are the same as God. But we are the Tasta Shakti. We are the marginal energy of God. Here the analogy is given the sun and the sunshine. The sun, the sun globe, and the sunshine are all related, but they're not the same. And you cannot have sunshine without the sun, but you can have the sun without sunshine. But the sun is the origin of the sunshine. So in Brahma Samhita, Lord Brahma has given a few nice verses. Agni asa saklantri viti manti, pasyanti panti kayanti, chiranjaganti, ananchin maya sarujala vigrahasha, Govindam Aipusha Tamaha Bajami. I worship Govinda, the prime of Lord, his transcendental form of bliss, truth, substantiality is thus full of the most dazzling splendor. Each of the limbs of that transcendental figure possesses himself the full fledged function of the organs and etern of the organs. Eternally sees, maintains, manifests the infinite universes, both spiritual and material. Advaita Machutama Nani Mananta Rupam Adya Purana Purusha Navayovanam Cha Vedesha Dulamama Dulamama Mavato Govinda Maripusha Tamaham Jami. I worship Govinda, the tribe of the Lord, who is inaccessible to the Vedas, but attainable by a pure and loyal devotion of the soul, who is one without a second, who is not subject to decay who's out of beginning, whose form is endless, who is the beginning, the eternal Purusha, that is a person possessing the beauty of a blooming youth. 
So this <coughs> uh, the Maya bodies say uh, it's all one. And the Muslims say that God is Naraka, or he can't have a form. And if you worship deity, that's idol worship, or the work of the devil. That's why the Ranza went all over India, Vrindavan, breaking the deities, because they consider the work of the devil. But we know different. The Archivigraha is non different than the Lord. And He's kind to us to appear in that form to accept our worship. So the devotees and this movement, and this, uh, it comes from the Western world, we're not contaminated by a Mayavadi philosophy. But people in India, remember we have a big program, we invite some chief minister, some important person, he'll make a speech, at the end of the speech he'll say, and let us all become one. These, those who have not read our books, some of them have taken the time to read our books and actually understand the philosophy of Bhagavad Gita, they don't say that. But most people have this misconception. This Mayavadi conception is pretty prominent in the Eastern world. But in the Western world, it's not there. We didn't get contaminated by Mayavadi philosophy because everyone thinks there's nothing after death. One man has given the notice. He had two years to live, so he went all over the world trying to enjoy this and that, so many activities, instead of preparing for death, because he thought that after death there's nothing. He becomes zero of white. Well, with Prabhupada, we pray to Prabhupada that you come to uh, dispel this Nevisesha Shunyavadi, dispel this Buddhist and impersonal philosophy. And also Lord Chaitanya traveled over South India for six years. He also defeated many uh, Maya bodies. There was a group of Buddhists who came to Lord Chaitanya. And uh, they were envious of Lord Chaitanya. So they prepared a plate of untouchable food, which means meat. And they brought it to Lord Chaitanya. But all of a sudden, a big eagle came and grabbed that plate and took it up in the sky and dropped all the food and dropped the plate on the head of the Buddhist. And then Buddhists became unconscious. So all the followers of the Buddhists went to Lord Chaitanya for help. Lord Chaitanya told him, you chant Hare Krishna in his ear. So he did that for some time and he became conscious. And then Lord Chaitanya explained it, the defects in the Buddhist philosophy and made them all into Vaishnavas. So in this way, we're not fooled or confused about different philosophies. We, uh, so what is given here, the Lord is explaining that uh, <clears throat> the, he has a form, he has an identity, and we have a form, and we have identity, and it is not all one. But this is the philosophy, Achinta Veda Veda Tattva. They were simultaneously one and different. Quality, we have the qualities of the Lord. If you take a drop of water from the sea, it has all the qualities of the sea, but it cannot become the sea. So quantitatively, we're qualitatively to the Lord, but not quantitatively. But we have form and the, the liberated soul. So this is what uh, he's talking about. He's talking about his sarup or his form. To think that God is formless. No. God has a form and we have a form and we are eternally uh, his part and parcel. But Bhagavad Gita says, Abu Bumar Apo Nayo Kamano Bhuna Evacha Ankarari Tiyam Me 
Minam Prakriti Astada. Earth, water, fire, air, ether, mind, intelligence, false ego. All together, these eight comprise my separated material energies. So that means that uh, it's like Prabhupada gave the example when you speak into uh, a recording machine and play it back, the recording is your separated energy. So Krishna it maintains and controls all the material worlds, but he's not con contaminated by the material world. He doesn't come under the influence of the three modes of material nature. Even when he was in Dwarka, he had married 16,108 queens, and they all thought that Krishna was their henpecked husband. And Krishna was playing the role of an ordinary human being. But he was not uh, under the modes of material nature, he was not confused, did not have any attraction to any of those queens on the material sense. But he did, there was some loving exchange in the material above, but not material. It's like the gopis wanted to feed Dharvasamuni a big feast, but Dharvasamuni was across, lived across the Yamuna. So when they got to the Yamuna, there was a big, there was a storm, and they couldn't cross the Muna. So Krishna told the gopis, you say to the Muna, Krishna's a brahmachari. So the gopis laughed, how can you be a brahmachari? You're always with us, we're all women. So they went to the Muna and they said, Krishna's a brahmachari. The Muna parted, they went across, and they fed Dravas and Muni a big feast. Then they wanted to come back, and the same thing, they couldn't get across the Yamuna. So Rasa Muni said, tell the Yamuna that the Rasa Muni only eats druva grass. So they said that, and the Yamuna part, they came back. So the, the moral of the story is that the Rasa Muni never eats anything for sense gratification, and Krishna doesn't have any mundane sense gratification. And Krishna met the gopis in the dead of night and had his rasa dance. It, was, it had nothing to do with this material world. It was the difference between iron and gold or day and night. Krishna has never influenced by the three modes of material nature, goodness, passion, and ignorance. So in this way, uh, the fall of the jiva is there and he comes into the material world and goes through repeated birth and death due to his forgetfulness of his relationship with Krishna and uh, he uh, falls into the mode of ignorance. Three modes, goodness, passion and ignorance. Well, the mode of ignorance is characterized by madness, sleep, laziness. And generally, we approach people, try to give them the book. People are in the mode of ignorance, passionate ignorance, say, no, thank you, I don't have time for spiritual life. But those people who are a little pious, a little more in the mode of goodness, they may accept a book. And they may read it and become devotees. Here it says, when one thinks that the living entity is not different in all respects from the sweet Lord, there is no doubt that he is in ignorance. Tamagun. So, uh, when, when Prabhupada went to America, and he got out to Jaladuda, and looked around, he, said, he saw that everybody in, in the whole country, America had 250 million people at that time. And every single person was influenced by the mode of passion, the ignorance, predominantly. There may have been a few souls that were more in the mode of goodness. But practically everyone was addicted to meat eating, gambling, intoxication, and illicit sex. So Prabhupada prayed, he said, I don't know, Krishna, why you brought me here. But I'm your puppet, so you can make me dance make me dance, make me dance. And I tell you, he prayed that they 
somehow to be able to understand this Vaishnav philosophy. Prabhupada didn't make any compromise. They told Prabhupada, when you go to America, you have to wear a suit and tie, shirt and tie and, and suit, eat with a knife and fork. Prabhupada said, no, I am not gone. I'm not going there to learn from them. I'm going there to teach them. So this is the uncompromising. Of course, in certain circumstances where it's dangerous to go to a country, a Muslim country or a communist country like China, we can't go in Vaishnav dress because they will immediately get arrested or being thrown out of the country. So we have to use our intelligence in that respect. But America's not like that. America's a liberal country, and people uh, accept all different kinds of religions and philosophies. So when Prabhupada went to America, he had three chunks of books, Srimad Bhagavatam, the Srimad First Canada, Srimad Bhagavatam, hoping to at least, if he wasn't able to stay in America, he could then pray implant Vaishnava philosophy into the society. When Prabhupada went to America, he only had 40 rupees in his pocket, which his son gave him when he boarded the Jaladuda. Now, 40 rupees, he's, he can't use, the only thing he could do with that is, is uh, use it to light a fire. His 40 rupees had no value in America. And it has, it's only worth eight dollars, just two hours spending in New York. But then he, he sold a set of Bhagavatams that he had with him to the captain of the boat and gave him twenty dollars. So at least he had something. So he was completely surrendered to Krishna, completely dependent on Krishna. He was completely sold out to his Guru Maharaj who gave him the order to go and preach in the English-speaking world. And Lord Chaitanya also predicted that his holy name would be chanted every town and village. But Prabhupada took that instruction to heart and took that prediction of Lord Chaitanya and made it a reality. But Prabhupada's God brothers couldn't envision how that could be a reality. A few of them came to England, tried to preach, and one uh, Lord in England he asked, asked the Bhaktisanta's disciple if he, could become, he could become, if he could become a Brahmin. And so he told him, the, the word he told him, you can become a Brahmin, no meeting, no gambling, no intoxication, no illicit sex. And the man said, impossible. So they weren't very successful. They tried to preach, but they weren't successful. But somehow, by the grace of Krishna and the grace of Lord Chaitanya, Prabhupada was successful. So we can read Prabhupada's books, Shima Bhagavatam, Chaitanya Charitamrita, especially the Adi, the beginning of Chaitanya Charitamrita, which tells us who's who and what's what. So we won't be confused in our Krishna consciousness. We know Krishna came. 5,000 years ago in Dwarpa Yuga in a blackish complexion and the Lord Chaitanya comes in the Kali Yuga. But he's Krishna Varna Trishta Krishna. Krishna he comes, he's not blackish but he has a golden complexion. Gold on the outside, black on the inside. Sri Krishna Chaitanya, Radha Krishna, Naya. Well he comes in the mood of Radharani. He comes to spread the Sankirtan movement. Harinam, 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 Eva, Kevalo, Kuluna, Stephen, 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 Gatir, Anyata. And by this chanting the holy name, we can develop our prema, our love for Krishna. But we have to chant without offense. There's Nama, Nama Parad, Nama Bas, and Sudanam. When you chant the level Sudanam, everything is revealed to you. So we have to uh, try to chant attentively, try to avoid it, the ten offenses. When Pallad Maharaj was asked by his father what he learned from his teachers, 
he said, Shavanam Kirtanam Vishnu Smaranam Parasevanam Archanam Vandram Dasha Atmani Vainanam. Then his father became angry. How is this five year old boy speaking Vaishnava philosophy? Where have you learned this? He called the teachers. He chastised his teachers. Why are you teaching my boy Vaishnava philosophy? Lord Vishnu is my enemy. He killed my brother. They, then the teachers were said, no, no, we didn't teach him that. We don't know how he learned that. But we know Pallad Maharaj, when he was in the womb, he, his mother was arrested by Indra, the king of heaven, thinking that another demon was in the womb for Anikashipu's wife. And they were going to arrest her and keep her in custody till the child was born and kill the child. But Narimuri came there and said, no, there's a great devotee in this, this woman's womb. So they uh, circumambulated her and went away. And Narimuri took this, the wife of Ranikashipu to his ashram. And she stayed there and kept Lamar's in the womb until Ranikashipu came back from his uh, austerities. And Narimuri preached taught Pallad Maharaj Vaishnava philosophy, this philosophy, Krishna consciousness. So Pallad Maharaj, he, was a, he remembered everything. So he was a Vaishnava from the very beginning of his life. But his mother, being a woman, was a little forgetful. So she forgot the instructions, but Pallad Maharaj didn't forget. So Pallad Maharaj then instructed his playmates and he told them that, uh, from, that we should not waste this human form of life. In the childhood, we spend the first 10 years in childhood, first next 10 years in playing, next 20 years in household life, next 20 years we get too old and invalid, take the spiritual life. That's why one misuses his spiritual, his material, his life. Veino smen yatade hai komaram yovinam jara tatade an prabhaptir diras tatranam yate. And then, so from boyhood to youth to old age, then again we have to take another body. So life comes from life. Scientists say life comes from chemicals, but we don't agree with that. Here in this translation, it says, in this way, by the influence of action, one body comes from another, and after another death, another death takes place. So one body comes from another, doesn't mean that the chemicals of one body comes from another body. We, we challenge the scientists, we give you all the chemicals, can you produce life? And they say, that we, we can't say. Or we don't know, but maybe in the future. But life does not come from life. Dull matter. This table is dull matter. If I take another table and, and then made it with this table, you will not get a, another table. Or anything material, any dead matter cannot produce life. And the symptoms of life are consciousness, thinking, feeling, willing. And the dead matter cannot think and feel and will and I have emotions. So we don't agree with the scientists that life comes from matter. And, that's, uh, and that, they didn't, that there's no life on any other planet. They also say that. But we know from Srimad Bhagavatam that there's 14 planetary systems and there's life on every single planet. And when Lord Chaitanya came and appeared in Navadvip, all the residents of all the 14 planetary systems came to meet Lord Chaitanya in disguise. So in this way, uh, we're not confused by Mayavadi philosophy, we're not confused by this material scientist, we're not confused by any other uh, so-called Kaitava Dharma or cheating religions. As long as one stays in Krishna consciousness, follows the program strictly, uh, chanting 16 rounds, following the four regulated principles, uh, endeavoring, to uh, become Krishna conscious, not get diverted, then we'll not be uh, far away from the path 
and to take to another path thinking that that may be better. We all know that Krishna consciousness is the best lifestyle. And they ask Prabhupada if Krishna is not God. What if Krishna is not God? Prabhupada said, well, we still have the best lifestyle. So no one wants to leave. If you feel comfortable, you're happy with what you're doing, and certainly you don't want to go to a, change your situation. But if we're not careful, we commit Vaishnava Aparad, or we let um, the anarthas in the heart, Lord Jitani told Rupa Goswami that there are anarthas or weeds in the heart which are innumerable. And these weeds grow along with the creeper, the Bhakti Lata beach. So one of us has to be a good gardener. If you're not a good gardener and you don't pull out the weeds, they may look like the Bhakti creeper, but they're not the same species. And if you don't pull out the weeds, they will grow and grow until the creeper is, is snuffed out, the creeper is destroyed. And that's why people leave Krishna consciousness. Even we see so many sannyasis, big position, big gurus have fallen away from Krishna consciousness because they weren't good gardeners. They let the creeper, the weeds, grow in their garden. So we always have to do everything with great care and attention, not mechanically. We have to uh, spend our time. Uh, devotee is always mindful. He doesn't waste his time. Should we spend all our time, all our energy, Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, hearing and chanting about Krishna, name, form, qualities, and pastimes. In this way, uh, we'll always no, Trinatapi, Sunichena, Torapi, Sishana, Manana, Mandana, Kirtanya, Sarari. We have to be more talented than a tree, uh, devoid of all sense of false prestige, ready to offer all respects to others. Then you can chant the holy name continuously. So we have to always be humble and know that we're tiny living entities and that uh, we should not become proud. Uh, or be influenced by the false ego, thinking that I'm great or I've done anything great. Anyway, the time is up. This verse, described by the Lord Himself, Lord Shankar San, is saying that that the living entity and Himself are always uh, qualitatively one, but quantitatively different. Chintaveda Radio Tapa. So we should always remember, and one should not uh, get entangled in material life so then have to take birth again. Here it says, by bodily expansion, wife, children, material possessions, one's influenced, and uh, takes one body after another, after another, and remains in the mode of passion and ignorance. Hare Krishna. Our glory is to Srila Prabhupada.